Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can solve the capacity plant location problem or the capacity facility location problem using OPLC Plex uh, Studio. Uh, so the maths model is over here that uh, I have explained in my early video uh, in while I was discussing the capacity facility location problem using uh, Python pulp library. Uh, so let me quickly uh, review this model again that we want to minimize the total transportation cost uh, that is the fixed cost and the transportation cost where yi is a binary variable that is indicating should we uh, should we open that facility or not or you can say should we open the plant or not FI is indicating the fixed cost against that opening of the facility or the plant, where XIJ is indicating the transportation cost from plant I to market J, or you can say from facility I to market J. Right, so this is a variable order transportation cost, this is a fixed cost. Uh, so that means this is basically a mix and teacher linear programming model uh, where those constraints are. So this is the objective function, the constraints are that we have to meet all the demand of the customers. And the second thing is if that facility is open, so we cannot transport the quantity uh, to the GF customer from the IF facility more than K. That is basically indicating the capacity of that plant. So we want to solve this mix and easily linear programming problem using OPLC Plex. So the data I have taken that is again as I told you that uh, the problem I or you can see the data I have taken that is from the book of supply chain management by Chopra Petition. So that is on page double one seven. So this is the problem which I am going to solve. So we have five supplier region and we have five demand region. Um, so they have given us the transportation cost that is from North America to uh, North America. So that is basically indicating the supply from North America to North America, then supply from North America to South America and so on. So they have given us the transportation cost. So we have given the fixed cost if we open the facility in North America or South America and so on. We have given the capacity right so the capacity uh, right now they have given us basically the two type of fixed cost and capacity so in this particular problem uh, i'm going to use the high uh, capacity this particular data this fixed cost as this is the uh, high capacity so in order to solve this uh, capacity facility location problem in oplc plex so first we need to create the project. So in order to create a project, we will do file, new OPL project. Uh, so we need to write down the name of the problem that's capacity facility location problem. So I'm creating this on my desktop. So I'm creating add run configuration in order to solve the problem. I need create model as well as uh, I'm also creating the data because instead of uh, I, I will define the data model uh, file which I did in my previous videos. Um, in this particular video, I will define the data in a separate data file. So that's why I'm using create data. So I will click finish. So once we click it, so we can see that this is our project that is CFLP, uh, right? We have uh, two files, one is model file and another is a data file. And in a run configuration, we have a default configuration. As you know that we can also rename it. You can write down the name of configuration, uh, capacity, facility, location, problem, can, configuration, or you can simply press OK. So let me click on first model. So in a model, what I am going to do it. So first of all, I need to define the indexes. So you can say indices. So I'm defining the indices. So what are the indices? That is I and J. So I is basically indicating the supply 
uh, part at J is indicating the demand part. So that means I is indicating from this particular facility to this particular demand region because uh, we have five uh, supply region, we have five demand region. So in order to define these indices, but I am doing it that I am saying int because I am going to define uh, this index as an integer type. So you can also define as a string type as well, but right now I'm defining it as an integer. So supply underscore region and equal these three dots basically is indicating that we have defined uh, this supply region in our data file. So that means, so OPL will automatically understand that uh, I need to uh, see the data in a data file. So then uh, we are giving us, uh, giving the range of uh, this particular index. So in order to do that, uh, that means where it is start, where it is finish, we need to use a keyword range. That is a data type in OPM. Then we are saying SR, that is the name of the variable. So that means whenever we are going to access this uh, index, so we, we can access this with respect to SR. So we are saying, so this supply region is equal to one, so that means the starting point is one. So we need to write down two dot up to where that is, we will uh, give the value of the supply region. And we know that how many supply region we have, we have five supply region. Same is in the case of we have five demand region. So that's why we have also declared the de demand region and we have given the range and in a data file so we will define the supply region is equal to five demand region is equal to five so that means sr range will be from one to five as well as dr region from one to five okay so the next step is we need to define the parameters so what does that parameter means parameters means we need to define the data set the available data so what kind of data we needed uh, as per our maths model? So we need a uh, fixed cost, we need transportation cost, we need demand and we need capacity. And that data set is given over here. So we have given the fixed cost, we have given the capacity as well as we have given the transportation cost. So in order to store the, those data files, so we need to declare the parameters. So uh, in order to declare those uh, data. So we are saying in fixed cost, that fixed cost is basically array. So why we are saying that this is array because fixed cost against each supply region, right? Similarly, capacity of each supply region. Similarly, demand of each demand region. And then the transportation cost, we are using two dimensional array instead of single dimension. So what's the size of this array? That would be five because we have the five supply region. What would be this one? This would be again five because we have the five demand region. So this would be five by five, right? So we need to define the data set of this fixed cost, uh, capacity, demand, and transportation cost. How we will do that? We will define it this uh, according to show you that is this is the data set so because the fixed cost is a single array so we are indicating uh, fixed cost that is the same name that we have mentioned over here so this is the fixed cost is equal to this is indicating the capacity of the first facility uh, sorry fixed cost against the first facility and then second third fourth and fifth similarly we are indicating the capacities of all five facilities, we are indicating the demand of each uh, five customers. And then we are indicating the transportation cost uh, per unit from facility I to customer one, from facility uh, one to customer two, three, four, five. Similarly, from facility two to customer one, then facility two to customer two. So all you are using, so we are using two brackets so this is indicating the uh, from facility one to all customers, from facility two to all customer, from facility three to all customer, and so on. 
So remember that in the end we have to mention the semicolon because that is indicating the end of the command. Okay. So once we do that, then the next step is, so we have defined the indexes, we have defined the uh, parameter. Now the next thing is we need to define the decision variable. So we have two types of decision variable. Uh, one is basically, you can say XIJ, that is basically a flow type as we know that, or we can uh, declare the decision variable, D bar is that is decision variable space float does that it should be it can be a fractional value but it should be positive due to positive so q sr that is uh, basically the supply regions indication and dr is indicating the demand region and uh, the second type of variable we have yj that is basically a boolean type right so that is d bar boolean because this is a binary that's why we are using boolean as you remember that i told you that there is a three type of data type one is in teacher another is float and the third type is boolean so once we define the decision variable the next thing is we need to define the objective function and what was the objective function that is basically is indicating uh, the total cost is fixed cost as well as a transportation cost so in order to define the objective function that is objective function so we can use the keyword d express that is define expression we can say we are saying that the cost can be occur in a fractional part but if you want that it should be in an integer form so you can write on int but i am saying that the answer can be occur in a fraction so we are uh, saying that the answer of the objective function must be saved in a total cost variable equal to then we are saying some i in sr and j in uh, drs basically we are defining this is the transportation cost right that is basically uh, this one so i in uh, from 1 to n and j from 1 to n so the same thing we are doing over here from source and then demand so qij multiply by the transportation cost plus then this is a fixed cost against uh, uh, each facility opening this is basically uh, yi okay and then multiply by the fixed cost so once we have defined the objective function the last thing we need to define uh, is to define the uh, entire model or you can say the constraints as well so how you can do that so the model is we want to minimize this total cost subject to we have two set of constraints one is basically a demand constraint another is a capacity constraint so the first demand constraint we are saying for all j in uh, dr that is demand region as uh, sum because this is for all j and we need to sum with respect to i so that's why i'm saying sum i in sr uh, qij is equal to that is basically we are saying demand j similarly the uh, next set of constraints are the capacity constraints we are saying for uh, i in um, uh, that is from 1 to n so that is i in sr and then some with respect to j that must be fulfill the demand but it cannot be more than the capacity right so capacity i multiply by yij so once we do that we need to uh, take the model file as well as the data file in the configuration file and then we can do run uh, right click run this so once we run this uh, we can see the answers are right now the cplex is start running okay because uh, this is a mixed integer linear programming problem uh, as you can see that first of all the solution of the objective function is this one uh, similarly what are the decision variables answer so these are the decision variables answer from over here okay so this is indicating we should open facility 2 4 and 5 so same thing we can see uh, in a solution tab so this is the answer of the quantity that is qij how much quantity we are uh, transporting from facility 2 to facility 
the customer one from facility two to customer two and so on as well as uh, which facility we are opening the second facility fourth one and the fifth one and this is a total cost similarly we can see that this is the engine log which is basically indicating uh, because this is a mixed integer programming problem so you can see that the answer of the objective function in different iterations uh, then best integer solution they are getting uh, as you know that while we are solving branch and bound uh, a method to solve the mixed integer programming problem or the cutting plane so we solve the linear programming problem and then we are checking whether the solution is integer or not um, and then uh, we are uh, then we can calculate the duality gap so this basically this is the duality gap so as this gap is reaching to zero so that means this is the optimum answer and what's the optimum answer as we have seen over here so this is objective function these are the decision variable answer and in a statistics tab we can see the answer of the objective function number of constraints number of decision variables okay and next thing is in this particular graph you can as you can see that uh, these ye yellow dot basically are indicating exactly as shown in the engine uh, basically the best integer solutions so these are the best integer solution answers and this red line is basically indicating the best node solution so this is the best node you can see that where the duality gap is zero so the optimum answer is this one as you can see that uh, from the book that we also got the same answer as this book because they have solved this problem using the excel uh, let me show you this one so 20 3751 and uh, you can see that where they are opening the facility and so on so same answer we are getting hope you understand thank you so much see you in the next video please do subscribe this channel